So, you want to build web tree applications. Well, you're in luck, because today we will learn how to use MetaMask methods. But first, subscribe to the channel for more web tree and front-end content. The MetaMask API is always accessible via window.ethereum when a user has the extension installed. After connecting your users, there are a couple of things we can do to interact with their wallet. First, you might want to make sure the user is using the right chain, since there is almost a new blockchain every day. We'll do this by submitting a wallet add ethereum chain request. We will pass the parameters of the chain to let MetaMask know how to connect to this network. This will be used by the extension to fetch data and display the proper information about this chain. We now have to test that this works and is successful. Great, we now have Avalanche in our wallet, but this alone is pretty useless as the user has not switched yet to our beloved hipster chain. To make this happen, we need to submit a new request of type wallet switch ethereum chain. The parameter here will be the hex ID of the chain that we pass in the first step. If you are unsure of the hex ID of your favorite chain, head over to chainlist.org as they have an extensive list of chain and relevant information. However, make sure you convert the value you get on there as MetaMask only accepts hexadecimal values. Having values like this is something you will face often in Web3 development as DX has yet to reach most of Web3 teams and people are still arguing over what is a standard or not. But enough renting. Let's get on with the app and make sure our users can track our awesome coin of zero utility in their own wallet. To do this, we will submit a request of type wallet watch asset. The important arguments here are the address of the coin, the symbol, and the decimal precision. You can also pass in the image if you want. This will have a similar effect prompting the user to accept watching this coin. With all of this information, MetaMask will be able to track the amount of coin a user owns and show it to them in their own wallet. With all of these methods, we need to wrap them in some sort of try-catch, as the user always has the ability to cancel the request on their own, and there is nothing you can do about it. Whenever you are building with MetaMask, ensure you respect what your users do, and make sure that your application recovers from users refusing a request. In a further video, we will dive deeper into this topic, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching until the end, and have fun building Web3 applications.